Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at something called spermatogenesis and something called oogenesis. This is the production of gametes. These are sex cells that can come together and reproduce, fertilize one another to produce an offspring, you or I. So, first thing is, they're very similar, these processes. We're gonna begin with the males because it's male, it's gonna be simpler, and it is. You'll find that within the testes of males, they will have multiple cells. They're basically like stem cells called spermatogonia, and what these cells have inside of them is, your, is the genetic material of that individual. So remember, all your DNA is wrapped up in things called chromosomes, and you have one chromosome from mum, one chromosome from dad, and you have 23 pairs of these. So for chromosome pair one, I took one from mum, one from dad. For chromosome pair two, I took one from mum, one from dad, all the way up to the 23rd pair of chromosomes. Now, instead of me drawing up all 23 pairs, I just chose a single pair here, I just chose chromosome one, and you can see I got the blue one from mum and the red one from dad. So, in the process of creating sperm, this is what happens. We have one chromosome one from mum, one chromosome one from dad, and we double up, we copy the genetic material. So as you can see, I doubled the amount and glued it together at the centromere for both mum's and dad's chromosome one. That's the first step. Then what happens is those two chromosomes come together and they recombine. They actually swap portions of their chromosomes with each other, and you can see they swapped one portion of this arm of that chromosome with each other. Now that they've swapped their genetic material over, mixed and matched, then they get pulled apart. And this happens because there's these little guy wires that come out and attach to the chromosomes and then split it and you can see this one cell splits into two cells that now have a single chromosome that's doubled up one from mum, one from dad, with some swapped over genetic material. Then this gets pulled apart again, and you can see we are ending up here with four individual cells that contain a single chromosome. And you can see that these individuals are very different to the first. The first had the pair, these individuals just have one. So this is called a diploid cell, has two. This is called a haploid cell, they have one. Now what these end up doing is these are the cells that are produced in the testes, they mature in the epididymis, and they grow these little tails to them and now what we have are sperm. Millions and millions of these cells that only have a single chromosome from each individual pair, from one all the way up to 23. So that's what it is for males, okay? Now they're just waiting for ejaculation so that they can fertilize an egg. Now think about it, they've only got one of chromosome one here, they need to get the other one from the mum, okay? So let's have a look. In females, what happens is this. Now, this whole process happened for males when puberty began. So at the age of around about 10 to 14 years of age, this is when this began. But for females, the process begins when they are in utero, okay? So when they are in their mother's womb, this process of doubling the DNA begins, okay? So it's doubling up the DNA and then, it freezes at this point. It stops at this point until the individual hits puberty. And once the individual hits puberty, then it recombines. This is once they go through the menstrual cycle. So every single month, they get recombining of this genetic material. They have it split apart. And just like the males, when it's split apart to create two cells, that contain the double DNA, this splits apart, creates two cells, but one cell gets most of the internal components of that cell called the cytoplasm, that's this one here, and the other one gets not much at all, that's called a polar body, and this is usually discarded, okay? So now what we're left with is one viable cell. This is actually the egg cell that's get, that gets ovulated every single month. Now what you can see is it has double the DNA here, very different to the sperm, but this is what's ovulated. And what happens is it doesn't undergo the next process of being pulled apart until one of these sperm come along and fertilize it. Now, if this sperm comes along and fertilizes it with that chromosome one, it stimulates now the process for it to undergo, undergo the next splitting process. And so these little guy wires come back out again 
and they pull it apart to produce another small polar body which gets discarded and another larger cell that contains the single chromosome. But now think about it. We've got that one chromosome here, but because that sperm cell has now fertilized it, the sperm starts to disintegrate and leaves with it the chromosome one that came from what will be the father. And then those two come together and remember, these are going to be the pairs of chromosomes from 1 to 23 that the offspring will have. This fertilized zygote now will embed into the uterus, embed into the endometrium and will develop into an embryo. Now sometimes this process of splitting apart doesn't happen equally. And for example, here when this splits apart, sometimes this polar body doesn't get anything and this is here. That's called non-disjunction, which means what could potentially happen is instead of having one chromosome one, one chromosome two, so two chromosome one, sorry, right here, you can actually get an additional chromosome that accidentally got pulled in and you have three chromosomes. This is called a trisomy and there's a couple of trisomy diseases or what we call chromosomal number defects and that includes trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome, Edwards, which is trisomy 18, and also trisomy 13 as well. So this is spermatogenesis and oogenesis.